Hey everyone, this is Dr. McFarland, and I'm going to try and get this camera just a little bit better here. And... Alright, so, it's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. But this will work. So, all right. So what I'm attempting to do here, and I can zoom in. I have found is I want to explain the four cable method, and basically I'm using um, my headrush pedal board here with a with a two different amps with some scenes set up, and. In order to do this correctly, you have to have you have to have an effects block or effects loop in the chain somewhere. If you don't have that, then your cable routing is all going to go to a certain part of your amp, and it's just not going to work. So, um, so what you have to do is first of all with the cables. Let me uh, set my guitar down here so you can see what's going on with that. Let me take this off here. Alright. So what you want to do with the cables is on the back of the headrush. And this this can be you, you can treat the headrush like a real amp if you want to. So think of this as like, okay, you got your input, you have your output, and then you have a send and return, which is the actual effects loop of the headrush. Now, if you want to think of this like your real amp, you know, your amp has an input and, and, and also has a send and return as well for its effect sleep. So, um, so the actual output, you, your amp doesn't have an actual output, but it does have a send and return. So, um, so what you would need to do is take your guitar cable, plug it to the input of your amplifier, okay, or in this case, the head rush. And then you're gonna take a cable from the send, and that's gonna go out to the input of your amp. And I am using a real amp in this video, so there's my quilter amp right over there. And so the sand is going to the input of the amp, and then the sand of the amp, the effects loop of the amp, is going to the return of the effects loop on your on the head rush, or it could be on a pedal board, separate pedal board, or whatever you want that to be. And then the output of your last pedal of your in your chain or it could be HX effects or it could be a head rush, it doesn't matter. The output is going to you can see it's green right there. The output is going to the return of the effects loop on your real amp. Okay, so whether you're using a real amp or a head rush or whatever, it is perfectly fine. So what's happening here is I do have an amp in the uh, in the chain, so I'm basically saying these two cables are going into the effects loop. Which, if I can get that cleared up there, okay. So there's the effects loop. So that is my that's acting as the effects loop on like a like a real amp. So that's your send and return right there. And then all these other pedals are acting as my my real pedals that you would have in real life, like for your analog drives or Strymons or Eventides or Boss DD 500s or 7s or 6s, you know, whatever you want. Whatever your real pedals represent here. Okay? So basically what is happening 
wherever this effects loop is, that is where the signal is being split in half. So my compressor and my uh, tube screamer is going into the input of the amp. And then my effects loop carries my tremolo, delay, and then reverbs. Or this could be whatever you want. You know, usually you would want mod, delay, and reverb. And the effects loop. Most of the time, I like my phaser, flanger, uh, univibe, any of, the, any of those kind of modulation effects in the front of the amp, as well as any overdrives and distortions and fuzzes. And also wall pedals and any kind of filter effects or whatnot goes to the front of the amp as well. So, um, in this situation, I am not using the cab, even though it's physically in the chain. But if you go to global settings here, you can see that my alternate source is the cab input, which is meaning that all this stuff is going into the going into the amplifier except for the cab sound. So, um, so let me grab my guitar here and show you how that works real fast. Um, and actually, let me go over to the amp so you can see how the cables are plugged in right there. So, so, there is, so the sand of the uh, effects loop on the head rush is being sent to the front, to the input of the amp. And then the sand of the amp is being sent to the return of the head rush, and then the out of the head rush is being sent to the return of the amp. So that completes the full the full chain right there. And if you're confused about sends and returns of this and that and whatever else, just just try to follow along here. Um, I've tried to explain it a few times on Facebook, and uh, I figured I'd just give you a visual representation. So. Um, but let's say, for example, I take my effects loop block and I put it before the amp. Basically, what that's doing now is it's putting the amplifier in the effects loop of my real amp. And um, it has a sound, but it's not necessarily the sound you may want. So let me put that back to where it was. All right, so let me put this on. this on my stand here and this is not gonna be perfect but my phone's getting out of juice so I'm having it plugged up all right so and this would work even if I didn't have a uh, an amplifier in my signal chain um, All right, so and I'm going to try not to use my feet because I don't have shoes on. So, and Let me go ahead and bypass the amplifier here. Okay. And I know the sound isn't going to be perfect because I'm just doing this live and the amp is over across the other, uh, on the other wall here. But um, So here's the sound of just the quilter amp. Just a clean sound. Okay, if I add in my green JRC. Okay, it's going to the front of the amp, just like a real, like we're in a real situation. Like if I had a physical tube screamer here in front of me, it would just go right into the front of the amp. All right, if I put in some uh, some extra reverb here, that's going into the effects loop of the amp. Okay, I can turn on my tremolo. Maybe, if I turn it on correctly. There we go.
Okay, so this is without any head rush amplifiers or cabs. It's just using the real amp and the real cab. But now let's say I want to add some extra tonality to what the head rush amplifiers provide. So now by using my, uh, I got some scene set up here. I can switch between my clean Fender amp and my dirty Bogner amp. And since the effects loop are, are placed after the amplifiers, that means the amps are actually going to the front end or the input of my real amp. And then everything else is still going to the effects loop. So, so you're basically using the head rush amplifier as a preamp going into the input of your real amp. So here we go. So here's the Fender sound now. Okay, let me turn the, the head rush amp off so you can compare. Okay, I mean, it still sounds good. It's still nice and clean, but this just adds a little bit more of that Fender character to the amp, so. And I am getting a buzz. Um, that could be from a few different things, but I'm not quite sure, so. Okay, if I use my, uh, my wet scene here. Okay, if I switch to my rhythm sound, it goes to the Bogner amp, and this is more of like a high gain sound. Then I could go to my lead, which is the uh, a little bit of delay and the JRC. All right, but let's say, for example, I put the effects loop before my amps. So now all those are going to the actual effects loop of the amp. And that's not where I want my amplifiers placed, but you can hear how that sounds. So now this still doesn't sound... It doesn't sound bad because what you're basically doing is you're replacing the preamp of my real amplifier and putting the uh, the head rush amp into the effects return. Basically replacing the preamp. So this is it actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Okay, and let's go to uh, my rhythm sound. And you also notice this is a lot louder because I'm basically now bypassing the master volume on the amplifier. And I would be using the head rush now as my master volume. So, so if you're going to do that, just, just be aware that you have to use the master now to control your, uh, your overall output of the amp. All right, so let's put the effects loop back after the amplifiers. And you can hear everything quiets back down just a little bit more because now the uh, master control on the amp is now being used uh, versus the uh, the master on the head rush. So that, I hope to simplify that for a lot of folks out there. Um, I've been getting, I've been seeing a lot of questions about four cable method, where to place things in the signal chain and uh and all that stuff and this, this kind of covers alternative source as well um because whether you're using the xlrs or the quarter inch output um you can 
you can assign the alternate source to be anything you want. So my XLRs, if I had that set up right now, going into my mixing board, which is my also my interface, is the PreSonus Studio Live. Um, that is, it has, it's set to rig right now, which means it's taking the whole entire rig and sending that into the mixer. You know, uh, all the effects before the amp, all the effects after the amp, and also the, the cab itself, or an impulse response if you're using an impulse response. Um, and then my amp line out is set to alternate which is using the alternate source, which is the cab input. So, like I said before, you're basically putting all the effects before the amp, um, the amp itself, and then all the effects after the amp, all the way up until the cab input, and then it stops there, which means you're not using the cab itself anymore, or at all, you're just using all the effects up until that point. Um, so if you wanted to use the cab as well, which is basically the same as using the full rig, you just set it to cab output, and that's how you would be doing that. Um, there's also, you can, the phones, the headphones, you can use the alternate output for that as well, or the rig. Uh, just depends on what you want to be hearing uh, in your headphones. So there you go. Um, it's really quite easy. I've had to deal with this kind of stuff when I've used the Boss ES8. Um, on that specific unit, there is a volume loop that is included on the back of the unit, and that is where you would be tapping out of the signal chain into an amplifier. And what's cool about that, just like on the head rush here, um, you can also do this on the uh, H sorry, on the HX effects, you can have a effects loop block in the HX effects there and do the exact same setup with, with uh, like, I, like I have with the head rush and also the ES8. But basically the ES8, you have to go guitar to the input and then volume send to the input of the amp, send of the effects loop of the amp to the uh, volume return and then the output of the ES8 to the return of the effects loop of the amp. So, uh, you know, just say it to yourself five times in a row and get it in your head. And once you learn that concept, you'll be able to apply it to any other piece of gear you ever use um, in your life because it's all the exact same thing, okay? And that's how I'm able to know and understand how the headrest works because they're all it's just you're treating this as a as a as a real piece of gear just like you would a real amplifier like a real cab like real pedals um just applying the same concepts to to all that so i am dr mcfarland i uh, hope you uh have a great day and be sure to leave any comments down below if you have any further questions and I will see you guys in the next video. Keep rocking.